What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back inside the Centura Health Training Center for another episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, the Broncos held their second practice of mandatory minicamp. We'll hear from head coach Sean Payton, all three coordinators, and Hall of Famer Steve Atwater joins the show. All that and more coming up. The Broncos were back on the field Wednesday for their second practice of mandatory minicamp. On Thursday, it will be their last one before the players hit the road for their summer break. And head coach Sean Payton talked today about what the focus was at practice on Wednesday. So one more day tomorrow, and uh, then we break. Um, we focused a lot of situational stuff today, third down, red zone. Um, obviously, you know, gets a little chippy and... and uh, I liked how we, we responded and, and, and got through the workout. Um, yeah, the message is, look, you, you, we, we got we to gotta understand what we're trying to accomplish as a team. And it's always, look, it's always the challenge for the O and D linemen. And, and so, um, and we also have to be able to understand discipline-wise um, how to get to the edge but not cross the line. And so... Um, games come up. We saw it last year. Playoff run. I referenced the Cincinnati Bengals penalty late. You know, these you, you, you've got to train yourself mentally to get on to the next play. And uh, that's why we're, we're doing what we're doing. We also heard from defensive coordinator Vance Joseph, and this was his first time speaking to the media since being hired this offseason. And he talked about why returning to Denver was the best fit for him. Sean's been great, obviously. But to have a chance to work with Sean Payton was, you know, it was a good thing, obviously. I had some choices, you know, after leaving Arizona. But Denver being home, you know, this is a great place, great fan base. We have a home here still. So for me, it was home. And um, outside of working with Sean, it was, it was a perfect spot for me. Just to watch Sean, you know, on a daily basis operate as a head coach, um, it's, been, it's been fun to watch. He's doing a great job with the culture of the football team. His message every day is really strong. He spent time on his message, and um, it's been fun to watch him operate every day as an experienced head coach. Plus, head coach Sean Payton detailed why he loves having Vance Joseph on his staff and the presence he has on the field. Well, there's a calmness to him and a professionalism to him that I, I appreciate and, and um, we always found a way to shake each other's hand after a game or talk to each other. I, I just think that uh, there, there's a poise and a, and a credibility when he presents that's impressive. Um, I think he's an extremely good communicator and I think he's a, an extremely good leader. Um, and I think I was fortunate and, and look, it, it never gets mentioned, but dating back to even 06 when I first became a head coach of, of understanding the importance of hiring the right staff. And, um, and, and I think we've been able to do that. You know, we're, we, we've got guys that are teachers. We've got young. We've got old. Um, a lot of different uh, former experience. But I, but I think with Vance, though, there, there is that calmness with him. And uh, and I think he's a good communicator. Plus, we heard from offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi, and he talked about how the offense is coming along and what it's been like working with Russell Wilson. You know, injuries are always a big deal. I mean, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, as you look at, at, at what happened last year, I mean, a lot of it's injuries. So staying healthy and, um, you know, again, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, for, for June, you know, 14th, I think we're real happy where he's at. I mean, he's... Uh, you know, he's, he, there's some muscle memory that we've got to overcome. He's used to doing things a certain way, and, and, and we're presenting a new way of doing things. But, man, he shows up every day ready to work, you know, the same guy every day, same attitude, and he's really fun to work with. So, yeah, just, you know, I think the answer for him is what the answer is for everyone, is just, you know, work hard every day, get your fundamentals down, understand what you're trying to accomplish. And, um you know, so far it's been really good. You know, he's a guy that, that obviously he's been in the NFL a long time, so I've, I've watched a lot of film on him. Um, and certainly we watched last year to, to, to see what happened. So a little bit of both. You know, you want to you want to see, you know, what a player does well, maybe what he struggled with. Um, but also you don't want to make too many assumptions. You know, it's a new year and a new coaching staff. And, 
you know, a new scheme. And so, you know, let's, we've got a lot of time to figure out, you know, exactly the, the best plan forward for all these players. Special teams coordinator Ben Kotwika also spoke to the media today. It was also his first time meeting with the media since being hired this offseason. And he talked about his relationship with Mike Westoff and how it's been working with him here in Denver. They were a great dynamic, right? So just the background there, Mike and I worked together, a lot of success in our days in New York with the Jets. Uh, he's been doing it for such a long time, and he's been a great mentor and friend. So you have Mike on that side of the spectrum who's been doing it for 30-plus years, and then you got Coach Banjo who's been doing it for about three weeks. So I'm somewhere in the middle, and uh, that dynamic's been excellent. So everybody brings a little bit of things that are different to the table, and uh, so far, so good. So uh, common language, and it's been a really uh, good discussion as far as making our unit better. Now joining me here inside the Broncos podcast studio to take a look at today's news is the Hall of Famer, Mr. Steve Atwater. Steve, such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Sid, I'm glad to be here. It's always so fun when you're here, Steve. Another day of minicamp practice in the books. I want to get your thoughts on what you've thought of practice the past couple of days, and is there anyone that's kind of stood out to you? Yeah, well, man, uh, the thing that stands out to me more than anything is how fast everybody is moving yeah. at, at this stage of the game. You know, you think they'd be doing jog throughs, but they're like full speed. Right. And I love that. I love that because, as we know, the game isn't played at half speed. The other team's going to come in here, they're going to be full speed. And the more times you can mimic that in practice, the better you're going to get. And plus, they're getting in great shape. Um, you know, the guys seem like they're on the same page. The, the quarterbacks are throwing passes right at the edge, and the guys are tiptoeing, catching it right on their fingertips. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know. It's, it's the part of football that I love, you know, when, when you can slow it down and you can see those small intricacies of the game. Definitely. And uh, I've noticed that. But, yeah, a lot, a lot of attention to detail. Uh, Sean Payton is a very uh, detail-oriented coach, and you can see that um, by the way that the guys are practicing. 100%. Yes, Stephen, there's been a main focus the past couple of weeks on situational football. You know, coaches talked about that a lot. Different players have talked about that. You know, these different end-of-half, end-of-game situations. Coach said on Wednesday that they practice, you know, third-down situations and red-zone situations. For you as a player, Steve, you know, do you like working on those type of things, you know, so in-depth at, you know, this point of the season, the off-season? Oh, 100%. I love working mm -hmm. on those situations because those are the situations when you get a chance to make a play that's going right. to going to change the outcome of the game. And uh, the more you work on them, the more it's like you get that muscle memory. You, you kind of know what's going to happen. You, like, you, you know, you see a, a motion coming from one side. Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I know exactly what's going to happen on this play. And you're able to make the right decisions because you've been through it so many times. And I love it that they're doing it. This early in camp, um, you know, they're, they're getting an opportunity to see what the coaches are thinking, and the coaches will get a chance to see, hey, which guy, which which of these guys is picking picking up this picking defense up, yeah. and knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing. Sean Payton has said it it's about every press conference that first off, you got to know what you're doing, and Definitely. Uh, that, that's super important. Yeah, it was the first time we heard from defensive coordinator Vance Joseph today as well. Yes. It was great to hear from him. You know, he sounds really happy to be back here in Denver. For you, Steve, what are you most looking forward to, I guess, from this defense, you know, this season? Uh, I just think it's going to be an attacking defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Vance Joseph's defenses have always been attacking. They've been aggressive. Uh, they've made plays. Uh, and he's, uh, Sean Payton said it perfectly that he his demeanor is is great not only for the coaches, but for the players to, to see him uh, being calm and, and cool right. and, and knowing exactly what he's going to do in different situations, I think brings a sense of uh, peace to the players and that they know, hey, our coach knows what he's doing and right. we just got to execute. Mm -hmm. It was cool to hear him talk about Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson, Josie Jewell as well. He mm -hmm. said he never stopped following their careers after he left here. Yeah, that, that is Kind of uh, odd how coaches can keep up with so many different players, but uh, they do it too. The coaches, they watch film, they watch their film, and then they'll, oh, man, let me take a look at this Denver game to see mm -hmm. what was going on and see how these guys played, and uh, and they do that. And that's, uh, that's a very cool thing, and I think that helps forge the relationship between the players that have played for the coaches yeah. and the coaches because, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's still about relationships and, uh, and building building bonds over the years. Well, Thursday is the last day of mini camp practice here the, before, you know, the players and coaches, they had out for their summer break before the start of training camp. I know coach Payton talked about 
a workout plan that he has for the players over yes. that break. Steve, was that something you did when you were a player? Did you have different workout plans, you know, throughout the month of July? Uh, well, I didn't have different workout plans. Well, I guess they were different for different mm-hmm. whatever the days that they were. Um, but, yeah, my wife, she always knew that if we were – uh, on vacation or we were, we were out of town, I had to have find a place to work out um, yeah. because I couldn't get out of shape, especially mm-hmm. this close to the sea. It's still got to got a what, another uh, month and a half yeah, or so. Half, yeah. But uh, you know, at this point, I'm I'm in the best shape of my life, and I don't want to lose it. So right. uh, I would imagine a lot of guys are in that same situation, uh, except for some of the guys maybe coming back from injury. Mm-hmm. They're they're still trying to get stronger. Versus a lot of the other guys, I think, are in maintenance mode. We're trying to make sure that I stay in great shape and don't lose it. Yeah, I know a, a big focus this offseason, and specifically at the beginning of offseason, you know, coach, you know, really for the first half of OTAs and that phase one of the offseason program, he was really focused on, you know, running and lifting, running and lifting. So for the players to leave for a whole month, like you said, I mean, how important is it for them to stay in that football shape before training camp? Man, it's so important, and hopefully they – they realize that, and the coaches, like I said, they've emphasized it, that, right. hey, uh, you know, we're going to be in great shape. They're in great shape right now. Mm-hmm. But I have seen players come to training camp and not be in shape, and it's the most disappointing thing ever. Yeah. Uh, but they, they know they're going to have a – I believe they're going to have a running test. And, um, you know, guys that don't pass the running test, it's not good. It's mm-hmm. not good because it tells the rest of your team that you haven't been doing what you should have been doing right. over this period of time. And it just – you know, puts a little kink in the trust between the guys, and they'll have to build that up uh, again in training camp. So hopefully everybody comes back. Uh, if they have a, a running test or a fitness test, mm-hmm. they all pass yes. it, and they can all just uh, go to meetings feeling like, hey, we all were committed. We all did what we were supposed to do up to this point. Now let's get it going. Mm-hmm. Well, on other news, Steve, I know it was announced this week that the Broncos are going to honor the Super Bowl 33 yes. team this year for Alumni Weekend, 25, 25th year anniversary. That'll be week two, the game versus Washington. You excited to get the gang back together? Yeah, super excited about it and uh, really just so thankful um, to the Walton Penner Ownership Group for mm-hmm. allowing it to happen and and uh, keeping it going. Uh, I know uh, all of the guys who played in that 98 season, they're, they're super pumped up, super excited to get back here and, and meet the new ownership group and also get a chance to be around Sean Payton and, yeah. and, the, and the players here on this, on this team. So uh, it's going to be a great weekend. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully we can root the team one to a victory. I know. The team will also be honoring DeMarcus Ware and his induction to the Pro Football Hall of Fame that weekend, too. But, Steve, for those weekends for you guys, you know, what are you most looking forward to? What's the best part about those weekends with everyone back together? Uh, well, really just seeing everybody and then obviously the stories that come. You know, we, 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 we're we going to hear some tales and, uh, you know, about what guys, some certain guys did in games yeah. and that and and, Things you've never heard you know, of before? We'll back, say, hmm, I don't remember being <laughs> like that, but okay. If you say so, that's that's what it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot, a lot be a few few tales being told on that on that weekend, but we're gonna have a great time. That's funny. A couple of former teammates out here at practice today as well, John Elway and Carl Mecklenburg. Yeah, it was great. I didn't get a chance to say hi to them, but I I talked to them um, you know, pretty regularly anyway. So yeah. uh yeah, two great guys, two legends, mm-hmm. and uh I think you know, Sean Payton, he's made it clear that he wants the alumni guys, around. Yeah. yeah, he wants them around. And, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, it made Carl feel great because Carl, he he wants to be uh, – he wants to have a relationship with, with this organization as well. So I've spoken to him oh, that's great. several other guys too. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm glad that they were out there and, you know, just continue to, continuing to uh, show the great t- tradition of this organization. Yeah. Well, it should be a fun one to finish out rookie mini – Rookie minicamp. Should be a fun one to finish out minicamp here tomorrow. Steve, always a pleasure having you on, and we'll see you back here for training camp. All right. Thanks, Sid. Appreciate you. Well, that'll do it for today's episode of Broncos Now, Broncos Country. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for the final day of minicamp.